Oh. Yeah, because I don't need that. I take it. I have to take it out later. Anyway. Okay, fine. Too late. Okay. <clears throat> Sitting up the stream to you two. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. All these things I have to think of. <laughs> this is day six mm -hmm. of our video series, six video series. I don't know if you've all been able to watch all of the videos or not. Yeah. They're all available on YouTube, so you can watch any of them if you missed any of them. Final day today. Yeah, this is the final one. And this is all as part of a ramp up to our 2022 straightness mm -hmm. course. So we're going to talk a little bit about the course in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But first, the topic for today, mm -hmm. straightness is a process, a state mm -hmm. of mind, and a yeah. habit that you can cultivate. Now, I yeah. thought we could talk a little bit about that, yeah. but it's really shooting for the long game. Yeah, in in general, when when you train horses, um, you know they're not not like computers, so so you can't download a program and then rely on it being there for the rest of the horse's life, right? Mm. And but it, it's often something that needs to be taken care of every day, like you know you water your garden and you know so on, like so mm. plants don't die. <laughs> so and with. A lot of things in riding, suppleness, balance, straightness. This is like a daily, lifelong project that mm. never ends, right? Yeah. It starts day one and it ends the time you retire your horse. Or... Okay, bad dog. <laughs> Fart. Fart. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, so it, it's something that needs daily attention and it needs... Um, yeah, work every day. It's like, and you find it in the literature too. How mm -hmm. you know straightness is something that will yeah. occupy even the greatest trainers <clears throat> um, all their lives. You know, and the entire career of the horse. Yeah, and it's not something that you will choose. Okay, on Tuesdays I'm going to work on straightness. Sort of <laughs> like you know, on Tuesdays we might do cavalletti. You know, yeah. or you know, we you might free lunge the horse. You know, before mm -hmm. riding, we used to always you know yeah. do this for certain horses. Um, or we would have a, a free jumping day. You know, it's not a, it's something, it's not a topic mm -hmm. that you assign to mm -hmm. a certain day and you only concentrate on that on one day in the training and then you do other things other mm -hmm. days. It's something that needs to infiltrate all of your training every day. Well, it affects everything. Yes, it does. Every day because it's physics in a way, right? <sighs> I mean, the old, ma old masters always used to say that um, balance and suppleness are the cornerstones of yeah, dressage. Yeah. Right. So you, you work on balance and suppleness and straightness is a part of balance. It's an aspect of, of balance. So you constantly try to refine it and improve it because balance and suppleness and, and balance and, and straightness then lead to greater relaxation and more even rain contact, better self-carriage, which then also leads to impulsion and collection or it, it makes it possible to develop impulsion and collection <clears throat> and whenever something goes wrong when whether a movement fails or is difficult or you know the quality of the gait deteriorates there's always a straightness issue mm -hmm. always the shoulders drifted away from the path or the haunches drifted away from the path and then that messes up the balance and that leads to bracing and that leads to loss of impulsion and that leads to um, poor in contact, you know, yeah. it's like this domino effect. Right? Yeah. So that's why you, you can't help but work on straightness every day because it really <clears throat> infuses everything. If else. you're trying to progress the training, you're going mm -hmm. to have to work on right. straightness yeah. every day. Exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. no choice really. <laughs> if you want to get better, if you want to train your horse up the <clears throat> levels, you have to. Yeah. So, um, a good question that we could answer is how can people um, infiltrate this into their training every day? What things can they pay attention to? You know, and we'll go into a little bit about our course, of course, in just a minute, but also, you know, what, what can they pay attention to in the training that helps them to identify and remediate crookedness, you know, identify crookedness, I, 
remediate and and bring the horse into a greater quality of straightness? Yeah. Well, straightness is, is always tied to the line of travel. I mean, you can pick any line, whether it's a circle or a rectangle or a square or, or triangle or diamond, doesn't matter. Just or, pick a line and put the horse's feet on that line and see if they stay there right. or if they drift away. Or various writing exercises <clears throat> right, exactly. too. You know, there's but, yeah. a, an assortment of writing exercises yeah. that you can ride, which, you know, and basically in mm -hmm. any exercise, you can pay attention to the tendencies of the horse. Yeah, I mean, exercises are based on lines, right? And then sometimes you superimpose movements on these lines, right? But it's always a line. And then tempo of course and rhythm you know that's very basic so you have to have a steady tempo mm -hmm. and you choose a line if you use a circle it's got to be round if you use rectangles squares diamonds they have to have straight lines in 90 degree turns right so and then you'll see very quickly whether your circles are round and whether they're the same size in both directions whether you, will... you can turn precisely yeah. or not exactly and yeah can you bend equally easily both directions mm -hmm. can you make a straight line or is it sort of a wave does your horse always drift in one direction you know can you make a nine oops uh -oh. a 90 degree turn yeah the camera sometimes turns over here it's just yeah. so weird we have a ghost in the camera no, no. yeah can you make 90 degree turns or is it an 89 degree or 91 degree turn you know yeah. is it some horses are slow moving their shoulders in one direction and quicker moving the other way so these are things you have to pay attention or they to they bulge over yeah. the outside shoulders yeah. you're trying to turn them yeah. Yeah, and these are all crookedness issues or straightness mm -hmm. issues. Right? If the horse only bends one way and not the other way, right? For example, if the haunch is always drift in one direction, if the shoulders always drift in the other direction. Or later when mm -hmm. you get to the lateral movements, yeah. you know, if the shoulder in, you know, is, if the horse is really easy to bend in one way, you know, but it's hard to bring the shoulder yeah. over, yeah. you know, exactly. you yeah. know, it's hard to get the correct angle. Mm -hmm. And, and then, in the other direction, the horse maybe the bend isn't so good, but it's easy to get the angle. Mm -hmm. you know, this yeah. is a crookedness issue. Yeah, yeah, and it, it just continues, right? You and you find that if your leg yield on the diagonal, it's easier one way and impossible the other. Mm -hmm. Half passes the same way. Uh, yeah. Flying changes clean one way, not so clean the other way. You know, or it's hit or miss in one direction. You know, these are all crookedness issues, straightness issues. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes behavioral issues can be crookedness yeah. issues too. We can talk a little bit about that, yeah. about horses we have known um, that were very spooky and mm -hmm. or unobservant of the rider, you know, mm -hmm. paying attention to everything else until they became straighter. Mm -hmm. They became become more centered and grounded essentially mm -hmm. and with that they become less spooky so yeah. through the straightening work they become more grounded more centered more focused on the rider yeah yeah improving balance and straightness generally makes horses calmer more attentive you know less spooky it's mm -hmm. true because they feel more secure they feel their body better they feel a connection through their feet to the ground to all four feet Mm -hmm. And some horses are very crooked. They they can sometimes really defend themselves. The, like the hind leg on the hollow side often doesn't want anything to do with the weight. So they hold it a little bit off to the side and they will adamantly refuse to turn in that direction, but they throw the shoulder violently in the opposite direction. And that can create mm -hmm. um, serious problems. You know, then you can completely lose steering over you know, with that horse, mm -hmm. you know, if they're very crooked, you know. So that, you know, then gets interpreted as disobedience or whatever, but it, it's, you know, crookedness issue. And if, if they're really militant about it, then there is always the question whether that hind leg hurts that's on the hollow right. side. So the horse doesn't want to put any weight on it. You know, that's the next thing. That... Right. Maybe they're protecting it for a reason, you yeah. know, and through this kind of work, you can identify whether this is something the horse is protecting because they need to or protecting because it's old baggage and they don't need to or or whatever, you know, yeah. but you can help to identify exactly what the cause yeah. of it is. Yeah. So see, 
Carla is saying before taking the straightness course, I think I always saw that the details were often compromised, but I didn't have tools other than my hands and legs. Yeah. I often didn't have the faith that if I applied pressure, I could correct the problem. I try again next time round, and again, it is there, even though I had applied a leg or hand to avoid it. Now I think paying attention to the refined details can be corrected because I can think it through better. I have many tools now to apply to the correction. My previous habit of many years was to see, but ignore the straightness details because I lack the tools to apply in the correction. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, common. That's mm -hmm. common. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Traditional dressage instruction talks a lot about leg and rein, but not much else yeah. often, you know. Yeah. And they often doesn't explain the connections. Yeah, Carla was in family. our last run of the straightness course and had mm -hmm. amazing success yeah. with her horse. <clears throat> she combined that with the what why how course. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. the two mm -hmm. worked really well together for mm -hmm. her. Sandy Kern says, spooking, yes, pay attention to straightness crookedness. I have recently discovered the value of this. That pesky left shoulder just wants to pop out and then we're yes. going in the opposite direction. Yeah, been there, done that. Yes, <laughs> That's I, happened to me too. Yes, I have taught people with horses. Mm. That were, the horses were exceptionally spooky. Mm. And once you start catching the shoulder on the hollow side that, that bulges out, you just start catching it and keeping it from falling mm. out. Mm -hmm. The spookiness went away completely yes, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah when, when you pay attention it's not the only cause of spookiness yeah, but yeah. It, it can cause it, it can fix a lot of these issues yeah. it, it, i'm not saying it's yeah. the one fix because spookiness yeah. i mean this can come from many sources but mm -hmm. it can cause crookedness yeah. can cause spookiness yeah, and if they like to turn around like that it's usually mm -hmm. in the same place i mean i i went through a phase where <coughs> Some horses would always turn around when I was on the open side of the circle in one direction. Yeah, right? yeah. And the, the trick is then to notice that and to start taking preemptive action before they get to that point where they always turn, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a habit, right? There's actually, you notice, if you start paying attention, you notice that before the horse turns around or does whatever they're going to do, the symptoms started several steps before, yeah, exactly. you know, yeah. there are signs, there are clues. Mm -hmm. And if you can start spotting those, you can catch mm. them there when it's small. Mm. So you don't need a big correction later. It's very mm. small to just catch Ooh, that shoulder left just a little bit, mm. the hind leg left, you know, the horse stops, you mm. know, engaging the rhythm changed these various things you can fix mm. Mm -hmm. when they're small. Yeah. And yeah, if your horse likes to turn around on the open side of the circle, somewhere near the center line, you could already start talking to the outside uh, hind leg and shoulder by the time you leave the long side. As you start the, the open side of the circle, you can already use your outside leg and rein and take mm -hmm. some preemptive action. Yeah. And then they won't, it won't occur to them that they can turn around, you know, because they're busy doing other things and they're paying attention to your outside leg and rein, and then you can often prevent that. And then you break that cycle because you know? yeah. it becomes a habit and then it's autom automated almost and the horse just does it because they think that that's what we do here. Yeah, you establish yeah. a new habit mm -hmm. in the horse. Yeah. They're creatures yeah. with habits too. Yeah. Exactly, very much so. Yeah. yeah. See. Kim Underwood says, certainly straightness was a key issue with Sophie's spookiness and nappiness. Um, a, lot, a lot of horses. And then, I'm sorry, Sue Barton says, having asked the question about uh, if the horse tends to fall in on a circle to allow him to fall in and find balance by increasing the size of the circle. I tried it with four horses and with two different riders after two days, great improvement. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the, the conversation we had with uh, Catherine, Catherine, you know, that in Feldenkrais, you sometimes go into the pattern more, yeah. which is really weird to us as <laughs> just stars riders. I mean, for me, it's like, oh, no, this is wrong. You can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. Let the horse get more crooked. But in certain situations, they fix themselves because yeah. then it gets too, like, if you're on a circle, they fall in. The smaller the circle, the harder the work becomes, in a sense. So you could tell the horse, okay, if you want to make the circle smaller, <laughs> it's okay. <clears throat> and then you, but maybe try to shift the weight into the inside hind rather than the inside front. 
and then they they will want to go out at some point because it's just too much work uh, to make the a small circle. Yeah, within <clears throat> the horse's mind and their mm -hmm. body, it makes the, they make the decision to to initiate the correction that you actually wanted to begin mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Which is brilliant. I know it's, it's <laughs> great if you can do this with students, and you get a big database very quickly. Uh, yes, <laughs> so that's great. And it's nice since there's a, an advantage to seeing it rather than being on the horse and having to feel it. Yeah. It's uh, there's something that um, fills in some some gaps, you know, mm -hmm. in a way by by seeing how it keeps you objective things too. work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah, there's some advantages to being the teacher in yeah. a situation like that. Yeah, I, I learned a lot from teaching yes, because it, you see it acted out. You see the principles and the chain reactions and the biomechanics. You see it. And then when you when you've seen it in somebody else, and then you sit on the horse, <laughs> and it happens to you, then you have a picture in your mind, mm -hmm. and you can identify better what you're feeling, or you feel more as a result of what you were observing yeah. with somebody else. So that helped me a lot, I have to say. <clears throat> yeah. So Sandy says, "Shanna, yes, exactly. I started to notice the starting point of the spookiness, and now I can keep it from happening." Without the straightness course, I would have never figured this out on my own. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, somebody has to tell you, right? Yeah, <laughs> same for me too. Yeah. I, you know, everything we know is because people told us. I, mm -hmm. We explored things too and yeah. learned things through experience. But it happened to me a yeah. lot in the past, where teachers would tell me something, and I'm like, "Duh! Why could I not think of <laughs> oh, that? It's God. so logical, you know." I know but I would like, never. Have oh, my oh my god! Oh my god! You're yeah. right. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah, once you know it's so obvious, right? Yeah. But you would never yeah. think of it yourself if somebody doesn't actually rub it in your nose. You know, <laughs> at least that's happened to me. You know, I would never have thought of certain things if somebody hadn't told me. Yeah. And in retrospect, it's like, how could I have missed this? You know, this is so obvious, it's so logical. <laughs> so. You know, when you know, yeah. you know, when you know, you know. Yeah. When you don't, you don't yet know. You don't yet know what you don't know. <laughs> you don't know, you just know what you're going to know. know. It's just the way it is. I don't know. If it's a strong exercise to become a better rider for my horse what by how give me the explanations on why to use those exercises they do work well together yeah. every issue you encounter there's always a straightness component you know regardless of whether you combine it with the canter course the flying changes course or what by how the yeah. rain contact whatever yeah. straightness the next friend of the straightness course is it begins um, on monday days begins on monday the mm. february 14th and it runs into october ending of the what why how course so yeah, it's a nice well, lead yeah. you know yeah just kind of nice it says i will try this idea of doing things longer <laughs> so, <I'm> so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah yeah it's it's i mean i really have to force myself because it's been so drilled into me to do certain things a certain way yeah. right and but take it as an invitation yeah, like exactly. you've always used this principle in your training mm -hmm. where if the horse does something you say okay i'll take that as an idea and mm -hmm. i'll work with it i'll take that as your contribution to the conversation we'll work with it and how can i embellish what you're contributing you know and, mm -hmm. and so you take that the horse wanting to fall on the left shoulder say and make the circle smaller you know as an invitation to make the circle smaller so you say okay we'll make mm -hmm. the circle smaller mm -hmm. we're going to do it my way or mm -hmm. or let me let me add something to the conversation mm -hmm. the let, i would like Okay, we can do that, but let's do it this. Let's try doing this too. So, both you and the horse are contributing to the conversation. It becomes a collaboration. <laughs> You're not just saying, no horse, we're doing it only, we're doing this, you know. When actually, if you do this, allow the horse to make a suggestion, you say, okay, I'll, I'll meet your suggestion, I'll meet you, and I'll, I'll you know we can i'll add this on to it mm. the horse will pretty soon relax to what you're doing and allow you to come to what you want to do eventually yeah. because it mm. it's actually mm. easier for the horse to mm. yeah. it's not just the gymnastics 
mm -hmm. and the biomechanics, right? It's also the psychology of the horse too. Mm -hmm. it, these all have to work together. It's mind, body, spirit, as we always say, of mm -hmm. the horse and the rider to working together. Training is so much more than just the training. <laughs> it, it really, training the horse encompasses way more. So there was another comment from Carla. Yeah, Carla says, Flower seems quite happy to do balanced and straight as long as we're not on the spooky end. I've been halting and straightening there now instead of trying to ride through it. This seems to be the best strategy so far. Good. The habit is to approach the scary end and go into a crooked escape posture. Halting or walking before it begins uh, is helping a lot, I think. Okay. Sound was hilarious when Shanna was saying, you don't know what you don't know, like a whiner. <laughs> yeah, the, the internet issues and people oh. are saying it's slow. And, oh, uh, we've had internet issues. The We use Vodafone mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it got hacked on Monday mm -hmm, and yeah. the um, it was down completely. Luckily, it didn't interfere with any of our trainings. Mm -hmm. Um, and the quality has been really bad all week. <laughs> it's slow, yeah. yeah. And I got a message here, it's instable, you know. It's like, yeah. Yes, so, so so it sounded like a why no. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, it slows everything down, <laughs> slurs everything yeah. down. Sounds like an old country song, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, to Maria. So, so if a horse leans on his left shoulder, would you make the circle to the left smaller and transfer the weight to the left hind leg rather than keeping it on the front left leg? Yeah. Um, There's several approaches you can take, right? Yeah. I mean, the typical dressage thing would be then to shift the weight to the outside and enlarge. It's still what I would do first, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it works usually. Like, but can, I, can I interrupt just for a quick moment that it's generally easier mm -hmm. for horses to shift the weight from a front leg to the other front leg. So if you can shift the weight from the left front leg to the right front leg, the horse mm -hmm. may find this more palatable mm -hmm. than shifting the weight into the hind leg that you want. But not every horse operates the same. So it's good to have mm -hmm. more than one approach and more mm -hmm. than one tool in your toolbox. Yeah. And so, yeah, in Feldenkrais, you know, one of the strategies they use is, is different from what your traditional dressage instructor would tell mm -hmm. you. So they would go into that pattern more um, if the horse wants to fall on the left shoulder and, spy, and, and make the circle smaller. You could make the circle smaller on purpose, but then I would try to also shift the weight to the inside hind because if... If you allow the horse to lean on the inside shoulder, they may not feel the need to go out and shift the weight. But if you put the weight more into the inside hind, <clears throat> then the small circle will be a lot more work. And then the horse will probably try to drift out a little bit and then you have a more even weight distribution. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if horses make a circle very small and they lean on the inside shoulder, you can also completely lose steering because then they um lift the croup and they swing the haunches out and then they just pivot like you know they swivel around so to speak and then you you, you lose the forward and then you lose the steering and then you you're dead in the water basically so that's a little bit the the risk of letting the horse really fall on the inside front but if they want to make the circle smaller and you can keep directing the way towards the inside hind rather than the inside front then they will most likely want to enlarge at some point or they'll be happy to enlarge when you ask them to. You know? So always observe if you play with these things, observe what the horse does and, and observe if it helps the horse, if he gets better or worse. But if you feel like, oh, he's coming behind the aids, I'm losing steering, then don't you know, get out of that and go forward again, you know, yeah. abandon that, that yeah. attempt. So, but um, yeah, you can you can just like always experiment, play with with ideas, play with concepts, but really watch what the horse is doing and and the effect it has. Yeah, exactly. And see if that's a useful response on, yeah. on the Don't, horse's part. If it if it doesn't show you that it's working mm -hmm. don't continue don't, with yeah, it exactly. you know try something else yeah it, it's not dogmatic it's just an option it's yeah. a possibility and that it, sometimes works yes yeah. it's good to have multiple options because yeah. not everything horses are so individual not everything will work for every horse mm. <laughs> kathy says i don't, don't know what lives at the uh, one end of my arena but it's been there for 10 years <laughs> so what by how i think it's a straightness balance issue looking forward to the course yeah uh, 
Well, maybe it's a troll, who knows? <laughs> Pokemon, <laughs> hiding in the bushes. See, Michelle, things is how would you move the weight from the inside front to the inside hind, stirrup stepping, half halting. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can even step inside front, rear, rear. So even touch on the inside front and push that into the ground more and then use mm -hmm. the, the energy of the rebound to transfer the weight to the inside hind. It's sometimes easier than just directly stepping into the hind leg. You know, yeah. sometimes it's easier to push the weight more onto the leg that is overloaded anyway, because mm -hmm. the horse won't resist against that, right? And then, but you know, whatever you, when you push the ball into the ground, it will bounce back. It's just the nature of the ball, right? And so it's a little bit like that with stirrup stepping. And so when that front leg lifts off again, you can then take the weight, shift it into the hind leg, front, mm -hmm. rear, rear, you know. Or, okay, we're going to get a little technical, um, a stepping pattern that can um, take the weight from the left front to the right front, mm -hmm. left front, right front, left front, left hind. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is you're mm -hmm. taking the where the horse wants to put the weight mm -hmm. in the left front, and you're saying, and it's you're reminding the horse it's mobile that it can be moved because the right front's easier. Mm -hmm. It's easier always for the horse to shift the weight between the two front legs yeah. than mm -hmm. into a hind leg. So the horse, you show the horse that it's a little mobile between the front legs and then you say, but this is where I want it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, so you get it moving. It's kind of like you get the, the energy moving in the horse. You get it moving and then you take it where you want it. Mm -hmm. Like Aikido yeah. a little bit. Yeah. There's many different ways you can do it. Yeah, yeah, there's so many things you can do. Rocking the weight, moving it left, right, front, back is usually good because the horses won't brace against it. Mm -hmm. If you want to go directly with the weight into one hind leg, the horse might fight you on that. But if you rock left, right, left, mm -hmm. right, front, back, front, back, then you know yeah. it, it moves around. It doesn't give the horse anything to mm -hmm. push or brace against. Yes. And then you can indirectly maneuver the weight where you want it to be you yeah, know and then you can move it away from there too so it doesn't become painful exactly horse, you don't you know? stick it there and say and then crunch it down mm -hmm. you can make it so that it's there and then it's gone mm -hmm. so that it makes it um more approachable for the horse this is where you know these rocking patterns like mm -hmm. you talked about and mm -hmm. the the triangular patterns that we have so you're uh, talking to three mm -hmm. of the legs but not the fourth leg for this pattern, you know, that can be really useful. Mm. You can combine them, you can make your own patterns. You know, we have mm. our tried and true, you know, but that doesn't mean that mm. something else that you come up with might be totally the perfect thing for you and your horse. Yeah. We really want to create thinking writers, as you know, in our courses, mm. and we want you to come up with patterns that are going to take mm. these principles and make something that will work for you and your horse experiment mm. with it, play with it, find something. Yeah, so Julie says, my horse can lean on the right shoulder, which is the outside shoulder on the left rein. Yeah, if you're on the left rein, the horse leans on the outside shoulder, then they won't fall in, but they will drift out. And in that case, I think going with that pattern is probably not going to work well. I think mm -hmm. that, that they will, yeah. they might turn around or they, you know, yeah. there mm -hmm. I would then ride a, a diamond, for example. If you're on a circle left and the horse drifts through the outside side shoulder, Try to make the circle into a diamond, for example. There's mm -hmm. other corrections you can do and step mm -hmm. into the inside yeah. stirrup that will probably be better, you know, than increasing that overloading of the outside mm -hmm. shoulder. Say, <coughs> turn, mm -hmm. <coughs> turn. Yeah. You know, so you I can mean, really catch that outside yeah. shoulder and move it in. I mean, one sort of strategy that I, I like to use is when the horse tries to ev evade something, you know, that I allow it but try to make it backfire so to speak so that whatever the horse came up with to to do instead of what i wanted to do needs to end up being more work needs to end up being harder like you know what happens frequently is that you ride an exercise in in one gate walk or trot and the horse finds it difficult so then he goes into the next higher gate and he thinks that he can stay a little bit behind the aids and then sort of phone it in on the higher gate. And then you, know, you could say, okay, if you want to do this in the higher gate, that's fine with me, but we have to do it right. And I'm not going to make my pattern any easier. I'm not going to make my circles any bigger. So we have to stay 
in the exact exercise and you have to do it correctly. And then usually, I mean, either the horse will do it in the higher, higher gate, which is great, yeah? or the horse will say, never mind, I'll go back to the original gate because the higher gate is just too much work. And then it's sort of win win, right? Then you're not correcting the horse, you're not telling the horse that they made a mistake, but uh, you're taking the horse's suggestion and you all you, you insist on is that the horse does it properly, does it correctly, right? And then the horse can decide whether he wants to continue in that higher gate or whether he wants to go back to the original. And either one is fine then, you know, if he does it correctly. Yeah. <clears throat> so see here, Melissa says, I've had success getting the weight off the stiff shoulder by rocking the weight as you taught outside front, inside front, inside hind, or inside front, outside front, outside hind. Yeah. Once the weight is in the outside hind. Uh, that seems a good time to ask for a candidate part. Exactly. I've used the inside hind for down transition, uh, candidate walk. Are there any other easy rules of once the weight is in outside hind or good next step or alternatively once it's in the inside hind, what good thing to ask next? Oh, you can do all kinds of things. I mean, if you want to canter, it's important that the outside hind leg flexes um, between the weight and the ground because the outside hind has to lift you into the canter. I mean, if you shift the weight into the inside hind, you could ask for lengthening of the stride in the trot afterwards. That might be a nice follow-up. Um, you could always ask for down transition, right? Into the outside hind or inside hind, trot walk, trot halt, you know, whatever. Um, you can really do whatever you want. Right? Um, Yeah. But yeah, yeah, when, when the weight is on the outside hind, you know, the candidate part is usually a, a good follow up. Um, if your weight is in the inside hind, you could lengthen the stride. That's a good one. But uh, you could do other things too. Yeah. Okay, let me check uh, YouTube just in case. YouTube, just okay. in case somebody, okay, no, Jackie Davis is watching there. Hey, Jackie. And, uh, uh, yeah, not a lot of people watching on YouTube at the yeah, moment. It's okay. Most of them won't be watching mm -hmm. later. Yeah. So, 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 so. Let's transition. Yeah. Yeah, so all the, these things that we've been talking about for these last six days or six videos, you know, we mm -hmm. go we discuss in detail with in our um, straightness course. Yeah, I mean, so. basically, you can address the crookedness issues mm -hmm. and achieve a greater quality mm -hmm. of straightness mm -hmm. with your horse, which will improve your horse's soundness, suppleness, yeah. strength, all of these things, the quality of gates, yeah. all of these things will improve. Um, by working on straightness. And you can do this with a, a combination of strategy, uh, yeah. gymnastic exercises. Yeah, but to backtrack a little oh, bit. Sorry. Sorry. No, just, sorry. It just came the idea yeah. came to me. Um, <laughs> it's good. We, you know, we all often get questions. My horse does this. What do I do? And there is always a two pronged approach, right? There is the short term solution. Like, what do I do in that moment where the horse drifts or, you know, goes off balance? Right. So there are stirrup stepping, half halt turning, little things you can do to, to fix the mistake when it happens. And then there is the long-term strategy. Yeah. And that's really the more sustainable, the more effective way. It's like this, through the horse's life, you have to be able to or you have to develop the horse's ability to support himself with the left side and with the right side of the body. Mm -hmm. You have to teach him to bend left and right, to move the shoulders, turn the shoulders left and right, and move the hips left and right. So he can cross with the left hand, he can cross with the right hand. When you have developed those abilities fairly evenly, then the horse is straight, functionally straight. Mm -hmm. Then you can put his feet anywhere you like, and you can do anything you like at any moment, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the goal, but that's long term. That's through the entire life of the horse and the rider, and it's uh, never ends, right? And it's every day. <laughs> so, and that's what the course is about. It's not about giving you a little 
tricks and quick fixes where you can help yourself in, you know, as you're riding your dressage test and the horse drifts a little bit. We'll talk about <laughs> those things too. So. Yeah, I mean, there, but, there's a place for that and there's, yeah. you know, it's legitimate, but you also want to have this long-term strategy. It's the long-term approach. Yeah. And the long-term strategy ultimately prevents the horse from getting crooked, you know, or from showing these crookedness symptoms. Yes. Or if she does, then they're very mild and they're easy to fix. Yeah. You know, so or you always want to you always want to work on this long-term strategy. Yeah. And that's really what what the course is about so that you can develop the horse's mm -hmm. straightness more and more. You know? Yes, and incorporate it into everything that you do, all the writing that you do, whether even if you're writing out hacking, you know, or writing on the beach, you know, yeah. you can incorporate these things in. Mm. So should we talk about the course? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, Do you want to share the screen and show yeah, them the... Hold on, let me... And we'll drop you a link, the link to the enrollment for... page because the new course, the 2022 yeah. course, begins on Monday, February 14th. But I'm keeping enrollment open, actually, until mm -hmm. Tuesday, the 15th, because that is our big welcome and orientation call. Mm -hmm on that evening yeah so our uh, evening yeah depends on what time of day mm -hmm. for you start yeah. where you are in the world okay so so here that's the content basically yeah of so of course right yeah so yeah it's um 12 modules and we've divided it up so that we start with diagnostic exercises mm -hmm. in the first several modules so mm -hmm. um using simple exercises like the exercise we had on what was it video three or four i can't remember of this series I can't remember. somewhere in the series we had an exercise yeah. that you can use to help diagnose your horse's crookedness tendencies and so we go into finer detail about that and help you to identify with your horse because some horses are really by the book they're going to be very clear mm -hmm. they're strong you know, they're, they're hollow this way and they're stiff that way. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to be very clear. Other horses are not so clear. Mm -hmm. And so we'll help you to decipher that information mm -hmm. to determine exactly mm -hmm. the horse's tendency yeah. and your own. That's the other thing in the first few weeks we do is personal self-assessments and you assess your horse, but you also assess yourself in your own crookedness tendencies mm -hmm. because Observing these is really interesting because you'll notice these will change throughout the course because of the Feldenkrais mm -hmm. and yoga exercises that we have in the course. <clears throat> I jumped ahead though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, every module has some theory, every module has some horse exercises and some rider exercises. Yes. The rider exercises of Feldenkrais usually. Feldenkrais, we know there's yoga, yoga in here yeah, too. Yoga. Curated yoga lessons. <clears throat> and we also, what we're adding new into this course this time are imagery lessons. So if you're a really visual learner and you really uh, learn well by mm -hmm. mental images. Mm -hmm. Some people or mental images really help you like the idea of riding the horse on railroad tracks, these sorts of things. Some people, mm -hmm. this does not work for them. Mm -hmm. but other people, this works really, really well for them. We're adding this into mm -hmm. the course for this, mm -hmm. this go round. Every mm -hmm. time we do the course, we add more in. So yeah. we're adding imagery <clears throat> lessons throughout where taught by Catherine, Charlotte, mm -hmm. Yvonne, Thomas, and me. Yeah. yeah. So these are our, Catherine is our Feldenkrais instructor. Uh, Charlotte all, is also a Feldenkrais instructor. And mm -hmm. Yvonne is one of our assistant teachers. And she's a horse physiotherapist. And she's a horse physiotherapist and a really nice rider. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, we have this theory component in all, in all the, the modules where we explain all the aspects of straightness, everything that, that has to do with straightness in terms of theory, causes and effects and, you know, and so on. Yeah. And we have exercises that help you diagnose the crookedness. Then we have exercises that, that work especially well on the stiffer side, exercises that work especially well on the hollow side, exercises that work well on both sides, that help you basically develop the horse's ability to 
support himself with a left pair of legs or the right pair of legs, bend left, bend right, move the shoulders and the hips left and right. It's basically that's all it is, right? In order to be straight, you all have to do these, these, these basic operations equally in both directions. And we do that with the help of exercises. Yes. So when you, you get a whole catalog of, of exercises that will, will do that. Um, yeah, so the modules are all similar theory, mm -hmm. writing exercises and rider exercises because the horse can only be as straight as yeah. the rider, unfortunately. And they build incrementally. So yeah. each module builds upon the work from the previous module. Each one has a couple of writing exercises for you to focus on that week. You will find that there will be some that will apply really well to you and your horse. Others not so much. Yeah. And so you can use the ones that work really well and right. you keep using the ones that you, you know, you, you will find you have favorites, right? In mm -hmm. like in module three, you all you like that exercise. I did that one through the whole course, mm -hmm. you know, because it proves to be something so useful for you. So you'll find that there are certain ones that just really click for you and your horse. So, yeah. And yeah, it's a course about learning through implement implementation mm -hmm. implementation if yeah. i can talk mm -hmm. yeah. not just learning the theory yeah. so we do cover the theory the theory mm -hmm. is super yeah. important especially if you're somebody that really wants to understand the what the why and the how mm -hmm. we cover all of this yeah. but we also well the how is really the writing exercises that's the mm -hmm. implementation and we really support you through that implementation yeah through the course yeah, and there's pdfs with all the theory and with the exercises and videos where I explain mm -hmm. the theory and the exercises. All the videos are usually available in uh, MP3s, right? so you can listen to them. They're downloadable. Actually, downloadable. we have the, the podcast now. Actually, mm -hmm. it's the Straightness Course podcast. All of the content of the course has been put into a podcast mm -hmm. so that you can listen to it while you're on the go. You just mm -hmm. you get access to it when you join the course. You get access to it, and you can download it just like you download um, any podcast on iTunes or anything you download it you can listen to it on your phone so what's yeah. brilliant mm -hmm. and really useful is you don't have to go and download each file off of the course platform and transfer it to your phone and go through that whole thing it's something that you just click and you can download on your phone really smooth and easy for you yeah, so Be, some yeah. For, demo videos. for those people that mm -hmm. really like to listen to the content while you're mm -hmm. driving or something that really mm -hmm. learn well by listening. Mm -hmm. We've done that. So yeah, yeah we have writer demo videos. Mm -hmm. Feldenkrais. Yeah, Feldenkrais lessons we mentioned, curated yoga lessons we yeah. mentioned. These are um, yoga mm -hmm. lessons that were chosen by Catherine and myself and then uh, to correspond with what we're working on in the course. And so they're not taught by us, but they're taught. Usually it's yoga with Adrienne. So Adrienne Mishler, and we've chosen specific of her videos that we like that really complement well what we're doing in the course. We find that her work really complements what we're doing, what we do with the Feldenkrais very nicely. And so if you like yoga and this works for you, you're going to love these. If yoga is not your thing, no worries. Yeah. You don't have to do them. It's totally optional. Yeah. Yeah, we have a Facebook group, a yeah. community yeah. Uh, for each course. Really warm, yeah. amazing support of the community. Yeah. And you can ask questions there. You can post videos in the, yes. in the Facebook group. Yes, and we'll give and you that, feedback yeah. on the videos. Then we have Q&A sessions. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can ask questions live. You can post them beforehand. If you can't be there, you, even if you can't show up to the Q&A, you can get your question answered live by us. So that we have a Google Doc that you can answer your or post your question on. But if you can show up live, even better, because then we can have a conversation even about it. You know, we can go back and forth a little bit and, and you can get greater clarity. We can get greater clarity on your question, too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we riff off, too, and go mm -hmm. into other discussions about things. It's it sometimes it's very interesting the what unfolds in the mm -hmm. Q&A sessions. Yeah. So each one is really 
a really interesting session. You can download all of these. You can download them to your phone to listen to later mm -hmm. as well. So you can listen to them while you're driving or mm -hmm. walking your dog or doing horse chores, really useful. Or some people like to listen to them, you know, when they're laying in bed at night. I, I don't, mm -hmm. we have some diehards. <laughs> that will listen to them in bed at night and then they say they sleep with Thomas's <laughs> voice in their head. <laughs> oh, whatever works, you know, that's right. We're crazy lot. And so you have lifetime access to the course too. So we never pull your access. I know that a lot of other people do this with their courses. We don't do this. We never take your access away. So even when the course is done, this is a 34 week course. But at the end of it, you don't lose access to it. You have access forever. You can come back to the materials over and over and over again. You can go through them anytime you want. You have also lifetime access to the Facebook group. So that means three years from now, you go ride exercise, whatever exercise two from module four, and you're, you have a question about it. You can post in the Facebook group about it. You always have support through there. Even if you don't, when we rerun the course, you'll get a discount and the opportunity to join the course at a discounted rate. But if you don't want to, no problem. We can still give you support. Yeah. New in the course of the writer imagery lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are drawings of things that we find useful that we use in our teaching or in our writing ourselves that sometimes it's his idea sometimes it's my idea sometimes it's Catherine's idea mm -hmm. Charlotte, Charlotte is contributing ben. some really great ideas yeah. and Yvonne has contributed some too so mm -hmm. we have a, a great assortment of images that may or may not but probably will really help you in achieving greater quality straightness in your writing Go ahead, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, so just looking through, you know, additional things here, the definition of straightness and crookedness, that's often a little bit confusing for people, you know, what's yeah. the hollow side, what's the stiff side, and so on. I will explain the biomechanics, um, how to tell the difference between the hollow side and stiff side, and how that, you know, affects the, the rest of the training. Um, symptoms of crookedness, so we give you lists of this is what the typical symptoms for the hollow side, typical symptoms for the stiff side. But like Shanna said earlier, sometimes there are horses that have mixed symptoms, maybe because they were injured at one point and that messes with the crookedness or because the rider is crooked, crooked in a different way than the horse. So that interferes with each other. So that can sometimes uh, result to a little bit of a muddled picture, not, not clear cut, you know. So we help you, yeah kind of make sense of all of this yeah yeah we help you analyze and assess the, your crookedness and the crookedness of the horse and then you know we have exercises to uh, help you yeah, mm -hmm. become more aware and then also improve the, yes. the crookedness improve yes. the straightness um That's cool. yeah, yeah so what to work towards and how exercises mm -hmm. you can improve to uh, use to improve your horse's straightness exactly and then like i said you know there are certain exercises that target uh, the hollow side a little bit more they're especially help helpful on the hollow side then there are other exercises that target the stiffer side more and then there are some that are even equally good in both directions depends yeah and um, yeah, the rider exercises. Oh, yeah. bonuses. Yeah, we have some bonuses. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a module and a master class on straightness and the, and a master class on straightness and, and one on straightness and double lunging. So what are these? These are where we talk about how crookedness manifests in all of these things and what you can do about them in those settings how you can address in your work in hand for example you know how will it show up and what can you do about it what can you do to 
remedy it with the work in hand. We talk about that in this module. We also have a bonus. This is a recording of a, um, actually this was the, um, the, the grooming, this was the energetic grooming, mm -hmm. the improving straightness with body work. It mm -hmm. was actually about energetic grooming um, mm -hmm. with Yvonne. Yeah, yes. um, for some reason, it's not corrected on here. Um, and so we also had a Rain Langness masterclass mm -hmm. that you get the recording mm -hmm. to. And there's a Feldenhorst lesson. What is Feldenhorst? Well, that's the uh, physical integration that Feldenkrais teachers do with functional, integration. functional sorry, yeah, integration that Feldenkrais teachers do with human patients, but you can apply that to horses as well. Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating thing that um, Catherine and Charlotte are developing. It's a, it's a form of body work for the yeah, horse. Exactly. And uh, we introduced this in a different mm -hmm. course, and mm -hmm. it was so popular, mm -hmm. we brought one of the lessons into this course because it's really helpful. Mm -hmm. That's very gentle and really interesting, has really interesting benefits for the yes. horse. Yeah. Yes, highly recommend it. And so, okay, so you get, we, have to, we have, are running out of time, so we have to sit through this really fast. So mm -hmm. you get the entire um, course, it's all 34 weeks. Mm -hmm. We have, there's, you get the Facebook group, access to the Facebook group. At the end of the course, you get a completion certificate of, upon um, completing the assessment at the end of the course. Um, there's an, a Q&A coaching package. There are 18 sessions, mm -hmm. Q&A sessions. Each one is two, and two hours long, usually, unless nobody has any more questions and we're through with all of them. Occasionally they go over, um, but they're usually two hours. Mm -hmm. You also get access to the entire straightness course Q&A archives, which are so many Q&As, and you can download all of these. So you can listen to them, like I said, on your phone, while you're walking, or doing barn chores. There's so many questions that are answered in these. And what's beautiful about the Q&As is that you can answer, or you can ask questions. I keep doing that answer. You can ask questions that actually don't have anything to do with the course content. If you have another issue that's coming up with your horse, you can ask that in the Q&As, it doesn't matter. We're gonna support you wherever you are, whatever you need help with. Um, at the end of the course, we release an ebook that contains all of the exercises from the entire mm -hmm. course, all in one downloadable ebook. That So you can access it from your phone, for example, when you're writing, you can go, um, you know, check out, oh, yeah, what was that? The second exercise, I remember it was module three. We did something with a turn and a, I can't remember. You can go look it up. And you can just keep that ebook on your phone so you can access it anytime. Really easy, really convenient. And you can stop in the middle of your ride and look it up. So easy to do. Um, yeah, all of the bonus modules with the work in hand lunging, double lunging, and long reining. We also have a stirrup stepping masterclass mm -hmm. um, recording. So this is, if you are unsure about what stirrup, what is this, what mm -hmm. the stirrup stepping? We explain it and talk about it in this masterclass and give you some introductory um, patterns that you can get started with using. Um, we also have a, an assortment, a packet of masterclass recordings that are on, oh gosh, body work, lunging for rehabilitation. Um, there, some of these were conversations with other people. Some of them were just the masterclass taught by us. The role of role and tempo on soundness and so many topics, really interesting. And so then we also have the Feldenhorst. We have um, the, let's see, yeah, the energetic grooming. There we go. And the study pods. So study pods is something we added last year. It, these We call them accountability pods and we've changed the name to study pods mm -hmm. because it's really less about accountability and more about your kind of your study group. These are your, your buddies for the, the mm -hmm. course. These are the, so it's an option. You don't have to sign up, but you are invited to sign up for a study pod. We assign you to a group of people and you get together with your pod mates and you can compare notes, support each other. If you need somebody needs accountability, like I need, you can determine what everybody needs at the beginning of this. 
if somebody needs accountability, the others can help hold that person accountable. Like you said, you were going to write the exercises to you, you know, if that's what you need. You know, if you don't need that, you don't need to ask for that. We have some other bonuses that are still left, but one is going to drop off tonight. So one is the supple, supple ribs bonus pack. This is um, a, an assortment of the Feldenkrais lesson, a master class, and a writing exercise all about suppling the ribs. So the Feldenkrais lesson uh, focuses on the rider's ribs yes. and the writing exercise on the horse's ribs and the master class is kind of the whole big picture about that. We have a mindset for riders package. These are um, <clears throat> riders often come up with stumbling blocks. You know, it, it happens in everything that you want to pursue. There are stumbling blocks that can happen with mindset. And so we have uh, an assortment of recordings around some of the most typical blockages that come up for riders. So we've put that in there for you. And then the recordings of Today, all of this entire series, the Let's Talk About Straightness series, you get these included so you can listen to them again. You can download them and listen to them again. You also get the introduction to stepping self-study course. So you not only do you get the master class, but you get a whole course that we did on stirrup stepping. If it's a mystery to you, if it feels like voodoo, mm -hmm. this you're going to want this course because it will help explain the what, the why, and the how, and break it down so that it doesn't feel so unapproachable and weird and scary. And it will make sense to you, and you'll find that it's really useful for your horses. Okay, so that is our course package. Here you can find the entire list of things, and then our enrollment options. You can we have a single payment or you can pay over four months or 12 months and we accept uh many currencies the euro us dollar gbp that's a british pound oh, sterling sterling mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> the canadian dollar australian dollar new zealand dollar and the south african rand so you can pay in your um preferred currency. Enrollment is closing really soon. So I invite you to jump in now. We also have a 30-day um, satisfaction guarantee. If for any reason you are not happy with the course, you can get a full refund within 30 days if you let us know. Mm -hmm. um, just email us at Ritter Dressage. No hoops to jump through, no worries, no, no fuss. I talked to somebody the other day, today actually, who she joined a 10,000 euro course. And this was in November and she's still trying to get her refund. Mm -hmm. And they promised a 100% refund mm -hmm. and she's still trying to get her refund. She, um, they're really, really running her through the hoops. We won't do that. Mm -hmm. We're really good about that. So not that I want you to ask for a refund, but <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. But most people don't ask for a refund. Mm -hmm. Most people love the course. But if you're not sure, mm -hmm. if you are just like, I'm just, I'm not, I don't know these people so well, mm -hmm. or I'm not sure if this will work for me, or mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is the right course for me and my horse, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. We want you to give it a try to see if it will fit for you. If it doesn't, just let us know within 30 days and we'll refund you. No problem. No questions asked. No worries. No hard feelings. So because we really want to take the risk away for you. I know we have to end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drop the link. It did. But mm. see, just quickly, Julie yeah. says, best course I ever did. I think I would have given up without it. Your encouragement and knowledge has been the biggest help and motivation for me ever. Thank, Thank you, Julie. Julie. Oh. Thank you. That is an indication of how our alumni that our previous course members feel mm -hmm. about the course. There's so much support, so much camaraderie. It, there's such a good mm -hmm. feeling. You get support from us, but mm -hmm. not only from us, you get support from everyone in this mm -hmm. course. In Cindy Kearns says, I'm in several dressage courses, but I feel that the straightness course has uh, been the one that has helped me the most with training my horses. Every problem seems to come back to straightness issues. Even my gated horses have benefited from the theory and exercises in this course. Mm -hmm. Well worth the enrollment fee. Yes. You won't be disappointed. Totally. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it, there is always a straightness component in everything, mm -hmm. regardless of what it is. This always come, seems to cycle back to straightness. Okay, and Sandy says mm -hmm. alumni, the upgrade fee, oops, oops, mm -hmm. is incredibly reasonable considering all the extra bonuses. Mm -hmm. Yes, I try to make it really doable really really doable if you mm. want to upgrade to the new versions of the course you don't have to no mm. no worries yeah. if you don't yeah. but if you want to i think it really do thank you underwood says the whole bit of team is extremely supportive and easily accessed regardless of what time zone you're in yeah. Yeah, we, we are in many different time zones yeah we, <laughs> our team, team too our team especially in the email we have people all over the world in our mm -hmm. email support team so that you can get your emails answered as quickly mm -hmm. as we're able to do but it, it's usually within a, a short amount of time mm -hmm. often within minutes mm -hmm. yeah it's mm -hmm. really amazing they're really amazing oh. sue barton says so much to learn breaking down exercises has helped enormously yes, yes. that's awesome that's exactly so yeah thank you everybody we need to end to, yeah, unfortunately to... we have to go do this in german now yeah. so I would love to see you in the course. Yeah. We begin, be the course actually begins on Monday, but the welcome and orientation is on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So you have until Tuesday to join, but the course begins on Monday so you can get access to module, mm -hmm. the first module. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not module one, it's module zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the orientation. So we start our mm -hmm. orientation process. Yeah like we do for every course yeah. on Monday. Yeah. So I'd love to see you in the course. It's 34 weeks. It runs through October into October something. It, it says on the, the sales page. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you're going to spend 34 weeks working on something. You might as well work on straightness. With mm -hmm. us. So. That's true. <laughs> come on. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Okay.